everyone, I'm Whitney and I post a new tutorial every week to help sewers of all skill levels learn new projects and techniques. This week I'm showing how to make an I Spy bag. It is a pouch of sorts that has a vinyl window and you can put um, some sort of filler inside as well as different little trinkets and you shift it around and look for all the different trinkets hidden inside. It's a really great way to keep young kids occupied and I'm going to show you how to make one today. If you've been around my channel for a while, you may remember that I did an I Spy bag tutorial several, several years ago, and um, that bag, my kids loved it. They loved looking at it and playing with it, and um, after quite a while, someone did throw it down on our stairs, and um, the corner of it caught the bag and ripped it open, which was fine. We had gotten a lot of enjoyment out of it already. So in that previous I Spy bag, I had used rice as the filler, and over time it did kind of break down a little bit and get sort of dusty looking inside the bag. So this time around, I wanted to try something different. There are obviously um, little plastic pellets and things that you can find at craft stores that you can use for a project like this, but I decided to go with a pack of plastic beads that I picked up at the dollar store because they're nice and bright and colorful, and then I just went all over the house searching for different trinkets and treasures that I could hide inside the bag. So my favorite thing about this version of the I Spy bag is that it is completely finished. There are no raw seams inside or out once it is done, and I just think that is fabulous. When you're ready to make the bag, you can head over to my website, WhitneySews.com, and find all of the exact measurements that you will need for this project. The direct link to the blog post is in the video description. Lay one of the short pieces right sides up, then the vinyl on top, lining up the edges. Then lay another short piece on top, right sides down. Add a couple of clips and repeat on the opposite side of the vinyl. Sew along both edges with a half inch seam allowance to attach. Having the vinyl between the fabric layers makes it much easier to sew. Flip the fabric open on each side and press flat with your fingers. Repeat with the remaining front pieces on the other two sides, layering right sides up, then the vinyl, then right sides down. Add your clips and sew. The front is now pieced together. You can add a top stitch on the fabric a quarter inch away from the vinyl, but I forgot to do it on mine while I was filming. Now onto assembling the bag. Lay one back piece right sides down and the other right sides up on top. Then lay the front on top with whatever side you want on the outside facing up. Add clips and sew around with a quarter inch seam allowance. Back stitch at the beginning and ending and leave about an inch and a half open. It should look like this. The raw edges are going to all get covered up with bias tape at the end. I rolled up a piece of paper to use as a funnel and inserted it between the front and back layers. Then I alternated adding my filler beads and the trinkets until everything was inside the bag. Take it to the sewing machine and sew across the opening that we left earlier. All that's left to do is to add the binding around the outside and I did this the exact same way that I showed in my quilt binding tutorial that I'll have linked below. The only difference is I folded the first edge back a little bit and overlapped the two ends instead of sewing the ends closed because it's really hard to sew them closed on a project that is this small. Then bring the binding around to the front and clip in place so it is laying nicely and top stitch along the edge to finish that binding off. The entire time you're working with the binding, make sure to push all of the inside contents away from the area you're working on at that time so you don't hit anything with your needle. Here it is all nice and finished. Now I did forget that adding the binding will take up a little bit of the space inside the bag because of how the um, binding is stitched on. So my I Spy bag ended up being a little more overstuffed than what I would prefer. So if you're making a bag like this, put a little less filler inside it than what you think it needs and then by the time the binding is sewn on and everything, it will probably turn out exactly right instead of being too full like mine. Unless you want this bag for an older child, 
and having it overstuffed is maybe a good thing because it is a little harder to shift things around and find the treasures inside so they have to work for it a little more um, but you know it's whatever you prefer let me know in the comments if you prefer this I spy bag or the original which I have linked right over here to the side and if you're interested in helping support future Whitney Sews tutorials make sure to check out my patreon page which I have linked right there as well and until next time happy sewing